find out how to submit your kit in the link below to be in a future video. This time we've got something a little different though, and I think you'll enjoy it. It's good to have you back on the channel for another episode in the viewer submitted what's in your kit series. But first, don't miss the giveaway link below to enter before October 1st, 2020. My Cozy Roadie Packable Office Chair. It comes with its own road case. It's worth around $700, and I'm gonna send it to someone who signs up for the email list. That's all you gotta do. I know everybody gets enough emails already, but the more people that subscribe to the channel here on YouTube, the more I'm worried about something happening to the channel. And I constantly hear about folks having issues with notifications and other features uh, that let them know when there's new videos. So I'd encourage anybody that's had those issues to sign up for the email list and get those notifications directly. I only send out a message when there's actually new content or something time sensitive like a giveaway and I definitely don't ever sell the email list to anybody else. Anyway, Daniel Simpson reached out a while back and asked if it would be okay to share his Pelican case and while he is an audio guy, he's also a touring guitar technician. I thought it would be a really cool chance to learn some tips and tricks and inside information that we can all use in the future when we find ourselves on a gig without a dedicated guitar tech. So please welcome all the way from Australia. Hello to all the Australian viewers. Australia? No wackers. Guitar technician, Daniel Simpson. Hey everybody, my name is Dan Simpson. I am a guitar tech slash tour manager slash general sound person from Brisbane, Queensland, down here in Australia. I've worked with acts such as Bugs, Semantics, Walk-In, Pandemic, honestly, too many for me to go through. Um, and today I'm gonna be showing you through my Pelican 1560. Uh, this is, from the outside, a regular Pelican case, uh, but I've had an insert built for me by Nort Cases over in Rock Lee. It is a guitar tech insert, and I'll show you what that looks like now. So, first of all, this isn't a permanent modification. This whole thing can actually be pulled out, and I do, and I put my mic kit in here for when I'm doing sound. But um, when I'm in guitar tech mode, this is it. So this comes up here, sits in there nicely. That's your neck support, that's your body support. You lay that out. And then this cable, just a short little right angle to straight sits up in the lid here, connected to a tuner and a small amplifier. So I can tune and diagnose where needed. So typically anything I need the most access to is gonna be kept in here or usually in the top one. Uh, any stuff that's like for fixing known problems or you know, not necessarily needed all the time, I keep in this bottom one usually because it's covered by some sort of guitar body. So I'll go through this main one. Got a pair of needle nose pliers, useful for plucking things out. Flathead, Phillips head, precision kit. Another Phillips head. Head torch. Allen keys. Um, keep some spare picks in here. Spare pair of earplugs. This tool is for tightening jack sockets. Um, so in order, you can do it, you know, perfectly fine with a pair of needle nose pliers, but um, this this thing here is designed for getting under and tightening uh, quarter inch jack sockets without chewing up the, um, you know, the actual socket or potentially damaging the body of the guitar if you slip. Um, talk about these two real quick. So these are built by Music Nomad. They are tools uh, just purpose built for cleaning guitars. Uh, this one's really great for getting in between pickups and uh, between tuning pegs, um, behind bridges and you know the funny little places. Uh, and this one's great for getting under strings and doing necks and this is just a general basically a makeup brush. Next in here, I got a pair of string winders. Um, I keep two in case I lose one. Indispensable, invaluable tool. I use one of these every single gig that I'm on. There's all this stuff in this box, um, 
And all this does is let me do one job more efficiently, but this thing is the real money maker here. Those are planet waves, I believe. Oh, sorry, they're Didario. And then a capo, this is just an Ernie Ball Axis. Um, just a real solid capo for holding down strings. Or uh, what usually happens is an artist forgets one. And then right in the bottom here, if I can get it out, is a string action gauge uh, just for setting up and um, doing setups on guitars and, you know, making the action all nice. And then I, I tend to get lids off, um, I think this one's called a Gatorade bottle, but um, you can just use them with little screw trays. I tend to sit them up in like the lid there and just tack them down and then I can separate my screws by what type or where they came from while I'm unscrewing the guitar or working on it. Let's move on to this bottom compartment here. This is where I keep all my various cloths and ointments and what have you. Uh, that's another example of a little thing I use to put screws in. That is a uh, cap off a battery, actually, a car battery. Just so many cloths going on for various different things in various states of cleanliness. And then it comes down to what I actually keep in here, which is the antiseptic from Isocol or rubbing alcohol. Um, that's for use very sparingly and very lightly. Um, I see a lot of people use this on fretboards and it dries them right out. And then a lot of people say, don't use this on fretboards, it'll dry it out. It's actually, they're both kind of in the right there. It does dry your fretboard out and it cleans it incredibly well. And that's where this boy comes in. If you immediately follow up with some lemon oil, you get a lovely clean fretboard. So that's what that is, fretboard conditioner. This one's a Gibson one. I don't know where it came from. I've had it for a while. It works great. Next up, this is uh, Music Nomad. They call it Tunit. Um, you may hear it referred to as Nut Sauce. Uh, it's just lubricant, little bottle. You can uh, squirt that right in on your bridges and your nut slots. Uh, for anyone using a, a tremolo, um, it'll make it much smoother and also I find it just prevents strings snapping a lot um, in many situations. Electronic cleaner, spray it on a cable, put it in a guitar, twist it around, should at least hold off the uh, crackly jack for a little bit. And then car polish, just for cleaning guitars. Car polish is much cheaper than the dedicated guitar polishes on the market and does the job just as well. And this top one here, this is my spares slash uh, just in case kind of drawer. Um, so here I have a spare nine volt power supply. A lot of the artists I work with um, have one spots on their board. This is kind of like a cheapy one spot type thing uh, that if it means, if it really hits the fan and it really comes to it in a show, I can run out there and give them power. IEC lead. Speaker lead and just a standard guitar lead. And another one of those little screw holder things which should be in there. So I'll talk about these just quickly. These are, you may have heard the, they're kind of, uh, they're off Grolsch um, beer bottles or just any kind of beer bottle that has a stopper. Um, and it sort of clamps down on the rubber thing. What these are used for is I take them and I stretch them over the um, the, the strap pin uh, with the strap on and it basically works as strap locks without having to modify the guitar. I've only ever had one of them fall off um, and in general these things are just really great for keeping straps on. You don't need a big ugly piece of gaffer tape um, wrapped around the body of your guitar, which is going to leave, you know, stains on it and what have you. And it will uh, definitely get the job done. Uh, what do I keep in the right side of my case? Up the top here, got general bits and pieces that just don't really fit anywhere else. I uh, take a per spare pair of strings personally, um, just in case. Obviously the axe usually give me a 10 pack of strings or whatever for the tour, and we uh, get on with it. Then I got some steel wool and got a bit of sandpaper. Never know when you're going to need it. Um, mostly for frets. Then got a whole bunch of tape. I'll uh, go over the tapes and what I use them for. 
gaff tape is just your general hold things together so they don't fall apart tape, as everyone will know. Spike tape, I use this uh, for marking positions uh, when there's a set change and I'm working for the headliner. So the headliner will go up, do their sound check, I will tape everything where it's supposed to be. Uh, that goes for mic stands, pedal positions. If backline's moving, I tape it down, basically. Then I got some painter's tape, just for protecting things if I need to work on them. Uh, usually fretboards when I'm working on frets. And electrical tape, which is just my get me out of my bind tape. You know, if I need to just hold a couple wires together and I don't have time to solder it, usually saves my bacon. In the second slot, just more bits and pieces. Got a soldering kit in here with a very, very basic little soldering iron. Um, some solder and some flux. Got a lanyard here for holding onto festival passes. Um, obviously hasn't been used in a while, but you know, it's handy to have. Sharpies. Doodling on set lists, green room walls, and other tacks. This is a pick holder, so I'll pretend my finger is a mic stand. Um, and then you can put your picks in there and they will be nice and secure. These are some set lists. I'll come back to that in a second. Another Sharpie, it's just floating around. And feeler gauges. So typically, I um, sit down with an act and I'll set up their guitar um, to just a medium action. And then I will go to them and I'll get them, hey, play this, tell me if it feels all right. And they go, oh, it's too high, oh, it's too low. And then I lower it a touch or I raise it a touch until they go, yeah, sweet, I don't want it to be touched. So then I take a measurement of that with these feeler gauges, um, measuring the distance from the frets to the strings, and then I know exactly how high I need to set up that guitar every time I um, set it up. And I have a big Excel spreadsheet that's just filled to the brim with uh, setups for different guitars and different people. So set lists, what's going on in here? Typically, um, most of my set lists will look like this um, because I know most of it by this point. I could honestly not even, you know, write all this stuff down, but it's just a peace of mind. So this is Walkin. They usually play in drop D and they change guitars at one point in the set, as in they swap over. And they don't swap out guitars unless something has gone catastrophically wrong, like a string break or an input jack starts crackling. So... Uh, for example, everything in here up to Flagpole Sitter, the cover of the Harvey Danger song they do, is going to be in drop D, and I just put D because I know they're not in D standard. Then uh, Good Kept Alive, um, I know that it's going to be Capo on 3, um, just for Matt. Usually I normally write down Matt, just because he's the one doing the changes. Um, then Matt tunes up to E standard while Pat stays in drop D, and then for You Know Me, the, the two of them swap sides of the stage, basically. Um, so Matt goes and picks up, um, Pat's telly, and Pat comes over and plays Pat's jag. Um, this is one of the first shows I ever did with them, which is why it's so in-depth. Um, you know, I'm like, I need to know every little detail, blah, 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 and then I realize, oh, I just know it off by heart. I know the songs well enough, and I know the set list and the guys well enough that if something's wrong, or something's in the wrong tuning, I'm gonna know. And, as I said, they don't even swap guitars unless something has gone catastrophically wrong. Which, um, thankfully for Walken, it usually doesn't. Unless you're in Newcastle and, uh, pedal board stops working. That's a whole other fun story. Another thing I keep in this drawer are these bad boys. Now what are these? These are just jack-to-jack -jack barrels. What these are used for is um, Walken. When I'm with Walken, they take quilter amps on tour, which are these tiny, tiny little baby heads. I'll just grab one, actually. Which are these tiny, tiny little heads um, that just generally cut it for 95% of the live tones that you're going to be doing. But obviously this is a head, it's not a combo. When you're on tour with a big band, like when we did the Smith Street North Queensland run, they have cabinets you can use, it's no worries. However, when you're working with a lot of smaller venues, there'll either be no cabs, which and they just have combo amps, or nothing, and you have to 
improvise something with the local bands um, if you can't afford to hire back one, which is usually the case with Walken. A lot of the time, an amp that you encounter a lot is a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. Great thing about a Hot Rod Deluxe, the speaker um, is detachable. You can actually pull the speaker out of the back of the cab and um, with one of these bad boys, you pop the speaker in there and you got a female connection on that end. You take this, put it in there, and hey presto, you've just turned your combo amp into a cab. It's super handy. So I'll put this all away. And last but not least, we have the electronics bits and pieces box. Cable tester for testing cables. What can I say? It works. <laughs> Cost me like 20 bucks. It's great. And then I don't actually take a multimeter on tour with me because all I'm going to be testing with that multimeter is continuity. So I bought a cable tester with continuity. Works great. Nine volt batteries. Marshall in the lid and the tuner um, take nine volts. This takes nine volt. It's just handy to have a couple on standby. I do, I'm planning to put a power supply in the lid. Until then, I'm gonna need one of those bad boys. It all just packs up like that. I tend to take this and route it through there. And then, if all wants to go right and we don't end this on a catastrophic failure. Oh, I've made a big crash. Never mind. Pretend that didn't happen. That is my tech bench. Thank you for watching. Thanks again to Daniel for taking the time to walk us through your kit. There was some really great advice there on using measurements to be able to deliver consistent results to artists time and time again. And I think that carries over into a lot of different aspects of working at more demanding levels. Tracking your progress and understanding how the changes that you make on something are interpreted by other people uh, is essential when you're working with anyone, especially a group of musicians who all have a different way of hearing things and a different opinion on how things should sound in the end. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you want to see more of these and definitely follow the link down below if you'd like to send in a video of your own to be in a future episode. Thanks again to Daniel. All of his links are down below as well if you want to check him out and see more of the work he's doing. I'll see you in another episode real soon.